Merry Christmas. I want to read to you from the book of Luke. This is purposefully not on the screen. Just let me tell you the story. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. <clears throat> While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Let's pray. Our great God, all your merciful ways are pointed at our joy in your glory. Lord Jesus, you came and you wept and you suffered that we might have joy. You've prepared joy for us, and you've prepared us for joy. We confess together now that this joy is, is not the fleeting experience of superficial happiness. Our joy is the comfort and the rest and the satisfaction of knowing that you own us, and you will never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we pray for this. We wait for this. We long for this joy to be full. Give us more than we can handle. Give us more than we can imagine. We confess that we often take our eyes off what you have done to bring us joy. Help us not do that. Help us not to take our eyes off the cross, not to take our eyes off the high cost you gladly paid for our joy. It's forgiveness that we need. And we need to remember that forgiveness in order to have our peace on earth. We long together now for the joy of heaven where there are no sad divisions, no quarrels, no contentions, no evil designs, no weariness, no hunger, no cold, no sadness, no sin, no suffering, no persecutions, no dull labor. A new heaven and a new earth where none are sick, where everyone is a king, where everyone is a priest, where all are free to serve you. Bring us joyfully to that home, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, at this point, we have a treat for the kiddos. Pastor Brandon is going to come forward, and he is going to read a Christmas story to all of the kids 
and if there are some particularly parental looking big kids that want to come down for the story as well, you're welcome to do that. So kids, come on down. Where are you going to stand? Right here? Yeah, I'm going to okay. just sit right here. All right, so Brandon's so going to take over. You just kind of spread out right around me. Right. Well, Merry Christmas, kids. Hey, are you guys excited about Christmas? Yeah. No, yes, no, yes, yes. What are you excited about? Uh, it's Jesus' birthday. birthday. Yeah, anything else? Spending time, with family. Spending time with family. Man, you guys have some really good answers. <laughs> Anyone excited about presents? Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about presents. Who opens their presents tonight? Raise your hand if you open them tonight. Who opens them tomorrow? Tomorrow. Awesome. Well, this, get, uh, this um, book is actually about a gift, too, and it's about the real gift that we celebrate on Christmas and the real gift giver. That's right, Jesus. Um, so I'm very excited to read this to you. It's called The Christmas Promise. Long, long, a long, long time ago, so long that it's hard to imagine God promised a new king. He wasn't any ordinary king like the ones we see on TV or in books. He would be different. He would be a new king, a rescuing king, a forever king. And do you know what? One precious night, God kept his Christmas promise. Would you like to know how he did it? The Christmas story starts with an angel, whoosh, he came from God to see Mary. The angel had a special message, Mary, you're going to have a baby. He will be a special baby. God promises that your baby is going to be king, not for a little time, but forever and ever, he will be the forever king. Mary was going to marry Joseph, so God sent another angel, whoosh. He came to see Joseph. The angel had a special message. Mary is going to have a very special baby, the angel said to Joseph. Her baby is going to be king and will rescue his people. He will be a rescuing king. God had promised that his new king would be born in a little city called Bethlehem, and that's where Mary and Joseph went. But Bethlehem was very busy with lots and lots and lots of people. So when the baby was born, he had to sleep in a manger instead of a bed. All the other mangers in Bethlehem had food for hungry animals to munch, but this manger held a tiny baby. He was God's special new king. The shepherds in the fields had such a surprise. It was quiet and dark, and the sheep were snoozing when, whoosh, an angel popped into the sky. Now the sky was bright, and the shepherds were so, so scared. But the angel had a special message for them. Don't be afraid. I have wonderful good news for you, the angel said. God's chosen king has been born tonight. He is going to rescue his people just as God promised. He will be the rescuing king. Then lots and lots of other excited angels join to celebrate. The shepherds were really excited. They went rushing to see the new king, and there he was, lying in a manger, just as the angel said. But they were the only ones who had heard the good news about the promised new king. Some wise men living far, far away had also been sent the message. It was quiet and dark, and they were watching the stars when whoosh, a new star popped into the sky. The star had a special message. The wise men knew what it meant. 
a very special king had been born, the king for all God's people. This child was the promised new king. The wise men were so excited, so they went on a long journey to see the new king. They did follow the star. And there he was, just as the star had shown them. <laughs> Everything God promised came true. There are lots and lots of different kings in the world, but God sent the greatest king of all. He sent a new king, a rescuing king, a forever king. And do you know what this king's name is? His name is Jesus. Yes. So on Christmas we celebrate God's gift to us, which is a king, a forever king, a rescuing king. Aren't we thankful? Well, thank you kids for sharing this time with me and, and letting me read a book to you. You can all go back and sit with your parents now or whoever brought you. Well, it's not hard to look around uh, at the state of the world in, uh, in 2020 and 2021 and feel like we live in really uncertain times. Do vaccines work or not? Was the Capitol riot a conspiracy by Trump or against him? Will the U.S. survive the current cultural division and strife? Does the church have to be afraid of losing its freedom to gather for worship? All questions that have been hotly debated this year. And then in any normal year, we also feel the weight of other uncertainties like, am I a good parent? Am I going to royally screw up my kids? Is my marriage going to last? How long will my health last? Could I stay faithful to the Lord under persecution? You could probably name a hundred more things that threaten your feelings of certainty. There are a lot of things we might feel unsettled and uncertain about. And it's the easiest thing in the world to let this depress us. We don't need any help with that. But for some reason, it seems that there are plenty of forces in the world very eager, actually, to help us be depressed about all of this. Take this, for example. A friend shared this with me, invitation he received by email from a church where he lives. Quote, please share the following information in your announcements to invite everyone to our longest night blue Christmas worship service. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but not for everyone. For many people, grief, stress, depression, anxiety, COVID, or other concerns make Christmas difficult. We recognize this reality, so we want to offer an invitation. We'll be hosting a blue Christmas worship service, and this will be a safe place to gather in the hope of Christmas without the pressure to feel joyful. Mm. Now, I understand that the holidays can sometimes feel very difficult for many. I, I get that. And there are times where it is right to be sorrowful. The Bible tells us there is a time to laugh and there is a time to weep, a time to cry. So I'm not saying that there are, are not legitimate reasons to struggle with joy at the holiday season. What I am saying is this. And that in all of this uncertainty, in all of this craziness, in a world where it, is, it takes no effort to be sad, it is the one who has faith in Jesus Christ that is uniquely positioned to pursue and to have joy even in the hardest of times. You may look around you and feel stressed and uncertain by fearful circumstances, but... Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. 
2 Peter 1.19. We have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as a lamp, like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Or the very word of Jesus, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. In all of your uncertainties, there is something certain. You can open God's word and be certain. And you can open God's word and be certainly shaped and changed and transformed for eternity. That's all I have to offer you this Christmas. Truths that shape life. Good news that changes lives and shapes them after God's own word and God's own image. I want to give you three truths tonight. To shape your life. Number one, you are called to come to God through Jesus Christ. You are called to come to God through Jesus Christ. It has been sung already. Isaiah 55, 1 through 3, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters And he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Isaiah here uses images that we can all relate to. Bread, milk, rich food, all to tell us what life and nourishment God's word is for souls who run to him in faith. You have been called. You have been summoned by this God. And notice this is a call for all of you. This is God's word, and so you are being called right now. Don't shut your ears. Don't turn this down. Don't even look at me. Don't think about me. Shut it all out. This is all for you to come. It's a call to come from your maker. Everyone, rich and poor, young and old, male and female, all you unfaithful, weak and unstable, empty and weary, bitter, broken, fearful, guilty, and hiding, come. Because Christ is born for you. He's the lamb who is given, slain for your pardon, come. Though you have nothing, he is the offering. He paid the way. He paid the price, so come. You are summoned to the throne of the Savior King, and you must come. That's number one. Number two, another thing that has been sung tonight, coming to the Savior King produces joy. Coming to the Savior King produces joy. And this is a joy that is for the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. This is a joy to the world. This is a joy to the earth. Even the creation, the stuff, longs for the King. Heaven and nature sing. Fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. They long for no more thorns. They long for his rule to be known everywhere on earth. Romans 8, 19. For the creation waits 
with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. My friends, even the rocks in your garden long for the king who made them. Your rocks know better than you. If you won't come, if you won't cry, they will. Because they know all his blessings reverse the curse. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. His blessings reverse all our curses, our sin, our death. Romans 5. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, coming to the King produces joy because sin no longer reigns in those who come to the King. Joy comes because death has received its death blow. There is forgiveness. There is life because of the one man who was for us what we could not be for ourselves and who did for us what we could not do for ourselves. That's number two. Here's number three. You sung it a moment ago. All the true joy, all true joy is incomplete until it is shared with others. All true joy is incomplete until it is shared with others. Now let us all with one accord bring praises to our King. All glory, power, and honor be forever unto Him. These are not just words of praise. They are words that invite praise. That's what true joy joy does. It invites others into it. Uh, Lewis, C.S. Lewis Noticed this. He said, all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise. Praise comes from joy. The world rings with praise. Lovers praising their lovers. Readers their favorite poet. Walkers praising the countryside. Players praising their favorite game. We delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. Praise is the appointed consummation of joy. If you don't want to invite others into your joy, then you can't enjoy your joy the way you were meant to. That's why there is such a thing as Christmas lights. That's why we give gifts. That's why we feast. That's why we do weird things like bring the trees inside and put the lights outside. It's crazy. There's no reason to do this except that we want people to join us in our joy. Let's be weird and invite everybody to be weird with us. We want people to join us in our happiness and joy. It's what we were made for. Psalm 148, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and dull deeps fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He's raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Kids, hear me. Teenagers, hear me. Strangers and friends, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, grandfathers and grandmothers, hear me. That's the future. It's all praise. From overflowing 
joy. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, says the word of the Lord. An old saint once said that all our souls are restless until they rest in Christ. He's right. You were made not only for joy in Christ, you were made to have that joy to the full by calling others to enjoy Christ with you. So here is my charge to you this Christmas. Go and enjoy Christ. Let's pray. Father and God, we give you praise for our great Savior and God, Jesus Christ. And we turn our hearts one more time now to sing praise from overflowing joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's try this again. Merry Christmas. And glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. You are dismissed. God bless you.